What's up guys? We're out here today on this lake and we're actually going to be using one of these Humenberg fish finders. So you might have just picked up that Humenberg fish finder, not really sure how to use it. We're going to tell you exactly how with this out of the blue fishing special, telling you exactly how to use it specifically with the auto chart live feature. Then we're going to go back to our office and show you how to take that and put it onto auto chart pro which is a computer program to have these unreal maps that you can give or use on any of your other fish finders. So we're gonna get into it right now. All right, so after you've powered on your Hoobin Bird here, you're gonna to wanna to get over to your chart setting if you have a GPS enabled. If you do not have GPS enabled, you will not be able to use AutoChart Pro or AutoChart Live. So once you're here, you should have some different depth reading. You can change that all in the settings. But in order to turn on Auto Chart Live, you're gonna press Menu once. You can cursor up or down till it says Auto Chart. Press the right toggle button. It'll say Record. Right toggle button on. And now we are recording. So this is where our GPS is saying. This map here, as you can tell, is actually not that accurate because I assure you, if you pan up, we are on a water body right now. So if you look back at this map here, you can see that it is not showing that we are on water. So that's where this program comes in very handy because you can have very accurate maps. You can pinpoint where there's rocks, any sort of structure, add your own waypoints, very customizable. So once you're in the setting, it's gonna start creating colors. So down here is your color bar. Light blue is those very shallow areas, whereas red's gonna be those very deep areas, which right now it's set between zero and 10. Now I know this water body has a 20 foot channel. So something I might wanna do is go back to auto chart into the settings here and then go down to auto chart options. Once you're in auto chart options, you can change the range, which is a minimum of 10. But as you change the range, you can see down here that that number will go up. So if you are in a area that you wanna be looking at different depths between 20 and 40 feet, and you want a lot of detail, you can change your min range to 20 feet, your max range to 40 feet, and then that'll give you a color palette just for those areas. You can change your color palette as well to have as many different colors as you want. I like to keep it on color palette four. You can also highlight colors with different settings as well, as well as you can mark out where there's shallow colors and which kind of specs you want. So if it's less than three feet and you don't want to be going anywhere less than three feet, you can do the shallow color and it will tell you exactly where not to go. So, you can change all these settings here to have a very detailed or not as detailed. Um, you can even have the contour lines visible, not visible, etc. Show raw data. I normally leave that off, but you can do that where it will show exactly where data was being pinned. And then so for bottom layer. So you can turn your bottom layer off or you can turn it on and choose whether or not to show vegetation or bottom hardness. So if you do bottom hardness, it'll have a different graph that'll show you exactly uh, if it's soft or hard bottom and then vegetation is pretty straightforward. You can play with the settings and adjust how much vegetation you want to be shown or how little. You can have it where the entire map shows vegetation just because of those parameters, but It'll take some experimentation of what works for you in these options here. Generally, the default setting is pretty good though. You can also change your save location. Right now, I do not have my auto chart live chip in. It's just saved to internal. As soon as I enter in an auto chart live chip, it'll automatically upload what was saved internal onto that chip. 
and then I can have basically infinite mapping of all my favorite lakes. So little, without further ado, let's get into how to create one of these maps here. So we have our starting point right now. What we're gonna do is we're going to drive in the zigzag pattern up and down. Once we have that, we're gonna change directions and drive in the zigzag pattern this way. What that's gonna do, it's going to create a very detailed map. It's gonna be covering a very large area. And by going over both directions, we might miss something or there might be a different angle that will show something different. So by doing it in that grid pattern, we will have a very accurate map that will be really good to go onto the computer. Once we're done that, we will go back to the office and we'll show you exactly how to take this off your program onto the computer and then you can continue to play with it with AutoChart Pro program. So let's get into that right now. What you can see here we have gone north and south east and west of this area so you can actually see the zigzag patterns on the screen here so what we're going to do is we're going to pull this off and put this onto a computer and then actually take a look at what's going on on the map uh, on this program so stick around we're going to get right into it right now all right, so now that we're back at the office, we can actually take that data that we gathered while out on the lake. So I like to open up whatever the SD card folder is. So you can see it's drive D on my computer. I have several different uh, other maps on here and things like that. But mostly we want to go for that data that we just gathered. So that's going to be under AC data. So you click on that. And then you can see that it's full of all these other files that I've recorded over the last few years. But I'm interested in the ones that we recorded today. So you can see right here at the top, this is today's date, or yesterday's date actually, and this is the file. You can use date modified to sort that make sure that it's right at the top. If you have more than one, then you can press that and then go down to the last one and press shift to select multiple or you can press one at a time for control by holding down that key and clicking but i only want this just this one file so i'm going to press copy then i would like to have it in a different folder that's available so i created a folder for this demonstration that's right here humanbird ac data paste. I already put it in there, but and there should be. So now you go to AutoChart Pro and you're going to want to press import. So once you press import, it'll pull up your files here. So we'll go to our desktop. If you do it right here on directly on the SD card, it is possible However, I like to try and keep my maps a little bit more organized by putting them separately onto the computer. So it is possible to click and import any one of these files directly off the SD card in Drive D, but it's best to go into your separate folder where if I want to be very organized, I could go here, new folder, we'll call it Lake One, or whatever you want to call it, and then put everything underneath the same folder. And then you can add different things like background. 
you can also add um, other data like tracks, whatever you want to add in there. Um, and then uh, I also like to do a folder for completed maps. So right now we need to get this folder and we need to put it onto the computer. So we're going to press open. There should be a little green bar at the bottom here that says importing data, conversion done, bada bing, bada boom, we're all done. So now, if you go to open, this is now converted from an ACU file to an R chart data file, which if we go open, whoops, click on it, open, all right, so here's all our raw data. You can see we zigzag up and down, left and right, so on and so forth. So if I go over here and press create map, look at that, beautiful. So I can also play with the parameters a little bit. So I know that there are some very deep spots and this is actually where an old river channel went through you can kind of see right here. So if I move the min dip up or down and the max step, so maybe down a little bit more. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So you can see all these different colorations here. These are kind of different depths. You have your chart bar here. There's a whole bunch of different things that you can do up in here, but this is very basic. This is kind of what you want right now. So now, if this was a pond, let's say, or an entire lake, you're gonna to wanna to create where your shoreline is. So you go onto Google Earth, which is a free download. Once in Google Earth, It'll pop up and then we can go to where this lake was. So this was actually Stephen Field Lake and where we mapped is right here, right from this dock here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do add path. So if this was the entire lake, what you could do is you could, in a clockwise formation, go around your shoreline, yada, 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 go, go, go until it's the entire lake. But for today's video, we're just going to do the area that we map from. So starting at a starting point that you remember, it depends if you go clockwise or counterclockwise, you got to make sure that you remember that, but I know it's roughly right around here. So I end that clockwise fashion, then I can do lake one shoreline. Okay, says Lake One Shoreline here, save place as. Make sure you save it as a KML file and you can go to our file here, Lake One, tracks, Lake One Shoreline, save. All right, so then we go back to our program, go file, new, import lake one tracks switch it to camel lake one shoreline bing bam boom there we go now if we go open we can open up this now it looks a little bit familiar but what we want to do is we want to change this so it'll actually say that it's a shoreline and we want it to be a defined area. 
So what we do is edit data underneath tools. All right. Now you can have different settings here. This is actually the area that if you did have a map and you had areas that had depth that was reading a thousand marks, you can actually go along right here and it will tell you each and every individual death point. But since this doesn't have any, any data, we can't do that. But if we wanted to, we could actually define and we can make this 100 feet applied all means that every single depth point in this area is going to turn into 100 feet. And look at that, now it's a different color. But we don't want to do that. So we're going to change that back to zero, apply it all. But what we do want to do is define this as a shoreline. So right now the data type is set at depth data. So we looped it in this sort of fashion. So if we do R to the left, if we had done it counterclockwise, it would have been to the right. If you had an island, let's say, you can also do this, where you would draw out your island, just like on Google Earth, and then press water to the right or the left, it really doesn't matter. That'll just say that this area is land and there's water to the right, and then it won't show up as depth data. It'll stay as an island on your completed map, which we will show you in a little bit. So loop water to the depth, Bada bing, bada boom, look at that. We go back to new, save our changes. Now we're back here and this is where our lake is. It automatically takes you there. Go right click, map here. So I kinda didn't do the whole area cause I didn't really know at the time, but it's a good example anyway. So you can see this is where we mapped, but I'm really focused right on this spot. This is where I wanted my shoreline or my DAP map, or let's say this was a pond or whatever. This is where the shoreline is. And all this was just extra. So you go create map. Oops, we did something wrong there. This sometimes happens. So new, open, shoreline. We can do this really quick here. So that's where the mistake was made. It's loop water to the right. So we went to the, to the we went clockwise. So loop water to the right. You go counterclockwise, loop water to the left. My mistake, my apologies. But we rectified it. Map here. All right, zoom in a little bit, create map. Aha, look at that. So now, what's all this to here? This is all a map that we don't really want. So you can go to tools here and clear area. And you can just click, click, click. Kind of just define the area that you want. to be cleared. It's kind of goofy, but once you uh, finish, so click, so you go tools, clear area, click, click. So I'm just kind of going here, 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 here. I don't even have to connect it. So this whole area is now whatever shape. Press right, clear the map. Perfect. So right here, you can see that there was some data missing. This is likely where the dock was. Um, so if you wanted to add some data into this point, you can go to Google. So it looks like it's actually more or less here. So I don't know what happened, but you can go create a path. Okay, and then we'll do depth, like one, spelled that wrong, doesn't really matter. So depth, like one, say place as, KML, tracks, perfect. Go back here, new, import, 
F Lake one, version done. All right, then we're gonna go open our new file, edit data. Now, so I told you you can actually go about and edit data points. So say I wanted to make this one foot. Move along. So now it can be a very tedious process. So something you can just do is you could do three, plot all. Perfect, look at that. Looks perfect, save, map here. If I uh, guessed right, so you can see our new data point is in there. So it kind of fixed it a little bit. I should note that every time you do that, this is going to be misplaced. And part of this could also be because of the way the shoreline is set up as well too. So I didn't do a great job when I was right here. So to me, this looks like this is where it's kind of affecting. So when you do this shoreline, um, I probably overlapped it and that's what happened. So when you're doing it, you can be a lot more careful than what I'm doing since I'm rushing right now. Okay, so now we're gonna wanna have a background, a very nice background. So the program I like to use is called SAS Planet. It's a free download. So what you do here, it just, it gives you very high quality images that you can take from Google Earth using Big Maps Hybrid. I like it a lot. You can see it's very, very clear. I'm not saying that this isn't clear, but when you zoom in, it's kind of blurry, whereas this looks a lot cleaner. I'm just a big fan of it. So what you're going to want to do here is do a selection area. So left click, okay, left click, perfect. And then you can go to stitch and it's very important. The output format you want is going to be PNP, Portable Network Graphics. So it's actually going to be a bigger file, but that allows you to have, uh, it'll remember where things are on the GPS. Then you go down to projection, make sure it's geographic. So that means that like waypoints or anything that you took will show up on this map here. You can also change to a ton of different mapping areas. I like Bing Maps, Bird's Eye Hybrid is the best in my opinion. So make sure, I like to do all three just in case, but KML is generally what you need. And then start. Whoops. Most important part, save to. So, save to. Desktop, our Lake One background there we go let's call it lake one background excellent start ta-da it's done so back to our auto chart pro program now you go to settings background map custom map. Now this is just from when I was using it earlier. Background, like one background. Open, get use up. So I did it under custom map. You can use these other maps, but custom map is the way I like to do it. Excellent. Look at that. Mapped is now in place. Looking good. Looking real good. So now we'll just quickly clear this area again. To do this again, it's left clicking, get your area that you wanna clear, right click 
and it's going to be erased. I'm kind of. It takes practice, but once you get used to it, this program is quite quick and slick. So there's our completed map. Looks great. Just mentioned if you right click, you can change a lot of different things. Um, you can get rid of the grid. You can also add depth labels, which is kind of funny because there's a bunch of depth labels out here, but we're mostly focused on this. So now that we're done, we can go to create map image. So now we want to put it under completed maps, like one. You can change what it saves as. Generally, JPEG is a good one. You can also create a KML file on the output. If you play with these different parameters, generally it can change. You can change the size of your depth, lay, uh, depth labels. You can add waypoints. Doesn't really matter. Make a custom name. Uh, doesn't really matter. Um, density, how much is being shown, whatever. So, okay. Green bar here. Map creation done. Go back here, go back to Lake One, complete maps. Voila. I guess it uh, includes some data that I took over here, but generally that's how you would do it. Um, like I said, it's all kind of part of that, those parameters there. So yeah, actually you can see right here, this was included into that map. So what, well, we know what to do, right? Go here and tools, clear area. If you clear an area, it doesn't delete it, it just deletes it from your current map. So now you can go back, create your map image. We'll replace this one. It's kind of good to show you what it's like when you make mistakes, right? Because I'm definitely not going to claim to be an expert, but look at that. Amazing. It's beautiful, it's colorful, and we made it ourselves. So that is that. Now I'll show you a couple more features on here as well. That's kind of just your basics, but uh, yeah, you can kind of go in here. You can play with uh, all the different colors. You can change your transparency. Um, if you went out and you can actually record side imaging and whatnot, that's all in here as well. Waypoint manager, so if you have different waypoints or you want to add waypoints, say I really want to fish here, here, and here because this is where that deep channel is. There's a bit of a flat here. Looks pretty awesome. You can go mark waypoint, mark waypoint, Mark waypoint and mark waypoint. Da, 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 da. Okay, so now we have our mark waypoints here. You can double click on them, change their names, change their icon. Um, okay, apply icon. Oops, yeah, there we go. And there it is. So it's changed. You can also go here and export. If you have a card that you want to export it as, that's what you would do. Uh, I'm not going to do that right now because that's not the right card for it, but I also don't want these waypoints necessarily, but that's generally what you can do. Um, so say this is all you mapped in one day, and then you go out and you map this rest of the area. You can also add that on later on as well. So you just go new, import, 
add your map and you can keep building on because this lake is around 400 acres that if you were to map that in an entire day it would take about eight hours of just straight mapping but either you don't have time for that or it's you don't have the patience for it i love mapping it's like mowing a lawn to me is therapeutic but it is really really fun to get out there and if you don't have enough time you can just pick away at it and eventually map your favorite lake over time and just add on to it um you can also export your map so there's all these different uh features where you can actually export this onto a card and have a lake master card kind of similar to what you would have with uh, like charts um, fish smart app and, and uh, Navionics type stuff so but uh, generally that's how that is done if you have any questions always feel free to give us a contact and we would love to help you out and uh, hope you enjoy and remember to subscribe all right, we'll uh, see you back on the water. Ciao for now. Well, there you have it. A nice map of a nice fishing area where you can go out and you can actually see all that there is to see. There's lots of different uh, channels in this map. Uh, and we actually were able to see a couple fish jumping out of the water while we were going. So it kind of reflects where the depth of the water is as well as the water temperature. So it just gave us a lot more information of what to work with when we're out on the water, getting us becoming better fishermen, getting the spots that we want to go to, and just all, overall, it's quite fun to just map. I quite enjoy it. It's like mowing a lawn for me. It's very therapeutic. So if you want to use one of these tools, visit Humanberg or you can go to Cabela's, one of those stores, pick up a mapping tool today, get out on the water, map your water body. And as always, visit outoftheblue.ca today where we will love to take you out on the water to set the hook on a good time. See you soon.